2024 meeting of the Harwich Conservation Commission in the Gandhi Griffin Room at Harwich Town Hall. Um, this is a hybrid meeting. Participation is possible in person, uh, observing online uh, on the Harwich Channel 8, or you can log in to the GoToMeeting site and instructions for logging in can be found on the Conservation Commission uh, agenda for this evening, which is, can be found on the Town of Harwich website. So we're going to start with Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on the agenda this evening uh, is a notice of intent for Route 28 road layout between Bank Street and Sacquatucket Harbor, SE 32-2552 for sidewalk construction by Mass DOT on the south side of Route 28. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Tom Courier, MassDOT project manager. And Steve Rhodes with VHB. Good to see uh, everyone town again. designer. Yep. Uh, Steve has found a place to uh, mitigate some runoff. Uh, he's going to type. Thank you. So I have a short presentation here we can look at on the screen. And um, after that, we can take any questions. Uh, but just letting you go over the updated plans. Thank you. Sorry. That's okay. Go ahead. That's not advancing yet. There we go. Okay, so just a refresher on the project limits. Uh, we are talking about the sidewalk installation on Route 28 along the south side of the road from Bank Street at Route 28 to Gorham Street or Gorham Road. So it goes past the Sacquatucket Harbor um, parking lot. So after the first hearing, we went back and took a look at areas where we could mitigate um, some of the existing um, runoff that Route 28 handles and eventually outfalls into Wichmere Harbor. And we were able to find a location uh, within the existing right of way of Route 28 that we, um, myself and Tom, coordinated with District 5 to get approval for, uh, which is going to take about um, four leaching basins that new that can go in to handle some of the runoff. The existing trunk line is going to remain um, along Route 28, and this is essentially going to be a small diversion to these leaching basins. And then any water that those don't handle will overflow back out and continue along the drain line. So it's not a total solution, but it's a, it's a good start um, on improving the, the quality of the water that gets handled from the, the roadway. Just not advancing again. I got it. Okay. So this is just a little uh, zoom in view of these drainage structures. So structures uh, four, five, six, and seven are leaching uh, units. Structure eight is a reconstructed uh, manhole over the existing manhole in the roadway. And structure nine is a, a deep sump uh, to provide a little creek treatment before the water gets into the leaching basin system. So all those leaching basins are connected together via pipe. So the water will kind of equalize and flow between the four of them before it um, if it needs to back up and out back into the trunk line. These systems are going to be um, the frames and covers. There'll be access covers on the leaching uh, basins, and those will be located behind the proposed sidewalk, so they won't pose really a tripping hazard or anything like that for people using the sidewalk. So I think we found a pretty good space here, um, and it works, it works to, to get the system, uh, some of the loading on that drainage trunk line offline and directly infiltrated into the ground um, with the nice sand we have down here. And just to kind of complete the picture, um, this is these systems are being installed between um, Bayview Road and Snow Inn Road. So there's, um, this is, you know, the western third of the project. Um, once the drainage trunk line turns down Bayview Road, we just carry on with the existing system along Route 28. 
The other update we made is we went and put the landscape plantings in along the strip uh, where the shrubs are coming out in front of the Brock's restaurant. So it's a bit hard to see on the, the impact plan, but they're in the, on the south side of the road, the bottom of the road here. In detail, uh, we're getting about 40, uh, 52 um, shrubs added in there for to kind of mitigate for those plants that are coming out for the sidewalk installation. And we're going with um, Bayberry and Virginia Rose. These plans haven't changed since the, the first hearing. Just wanted to kind of complete the picture of the work in the resource area. Uh, the sidewalk shifts from the south side of the road to the north side of the road as it approaches the limit of work on the eastern end at Gorham Road. And um, we're still requesting the same variances as the, the first time. Uh, no changes there. No, these, these updated plans led to no additional you know, changes in, in regulations that we're requesting really from that's all I had for the updated presentation thank you Amy. yes thank you and the town and MassDOT for putting your heads together and trying to find a way to mitigate for some of the additional structure that you're putting in um, by doing what I think is really good mitigation and trying to treat um, at least some of the runoff that's on Route 28 that's currently going into Witchmere Harbor, which is an impacted water body. So um, I'll look to continue to work with you about if there's things in the future that we can do to expand upon that. But I think for the intents and purposes of this application um, that you've met your requirement to do mitigation for the work that you're doing. Um, and... I see you made the change, the plant change that I had recommended, and I would just like a revised copy of that, three copies of that one sheet, really, um, taking the ink berry off that you did, and just with the pencil, uh, with the uh, um, bayberry and Virginia rose on there. So if I could just have rev revised few copies of those in the next week or so, that'd be great. Sure. Hard copy, please. Uh, um, if they're eleven by seventeen. Just email it to me. I can print this oh, size. Okay. okay. Sure. It's only three pages. It's only, it's not a big deal. So, yeah, just that, that page, whatever references the plants. The plantains. I think oh. it's two sheets that cover them. So okay. We can yeah. give you those. That's set. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, so, essentially, in the extreme storms, water may still be coming out of the pipe into Witchmere Harbor, but under your most your regular rain events, um, those basins are going to capture and treat the majority of the runoff. Um, Excuse me for a minute, yeah. So um, with that, I would recommend approval of the project as a limited project and uh, granting the variances requested. Okay, thank you. Comments from the commissioners. Mark? Nothing to add. Jim? No additional comments. Brad. I guess I have a couple. Just to want to understand a little context on how much stormwater treatment this is or what you're proposing, given what uh, is coming down there. So the water's flowing from west to east at that section of the roadway. Correct. And so um, I see that it's forecasted to handle five inches per hour, which is an enormous amount of water. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be all the possible stormwater that's at that location? Or is it... A portion of what would be going into Witchmere Harbor? So we, we look to size it for um, the biggest storm we can over a certain length of road. So that covers that, we could handle that intensity storm for about 550 feet. Okay. Um, lesser storms, like so yeah, the, the more typical, you know, drizzle rainstorms, um, that should be able to take a lot of the existing loading off of the harbor. Um, but on the bigger storms, we don't want to make it seem like the whole system is solved by this. It's still going to have some overflow out to the harbor in, in larger storms. Um, to put it a different way, the existing spacing in the catch basins today on Route 20 is about 500 feet. So you're essentially taking one span offline uh, in those larger storms. Right. So hypothetical, because you're not doing this, but if you were to eliminate all stormwater coming down that drain pipe at at Wichmere Harbor, mm -hmm. what would you do? What, what structures would be needed to get rid of it all? 
there's a couple different approaches you could take. Um, you would use similar structures, but you would need to expand your project to go all the way into the Harborsport downtown area. So you're taking the water off in bits and pieces as you go. Um, the other alternative is if you save it all up for one spot, you need a very large area of space created to hold maybe like 20 leaching basins or some, some amount like that. A big detention basin. Or, like yeah, or, or surface infiltration. Uh, Link Hooper, DPW director. Um, this really isn't about. This was more about space and existing easements and staying within the in the state's right of way, than it was what can be done. Right, but it's a legitimate question to ask. Yeah. Given no, what's, no, what's yes, happening, sir. what's being spent. I, I think it's a reasonable question to ask. We 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 did as much as we could within the confines of what we did. Mass DOT doesn't let drainage be put underneath the roadway. I have no such aversion when it's done properly, but they have their standards and it wouldn't be, and this, and Steve did an excellent job at finding a place to put these systems that wasn't gonna impact anything else. Right, sometimes I ask questions just to learn more about the process. <laughs> yep, thank you. My, my second question is on the uh, crossing for Cole Brook. Yep. You talked about it last time. Can you describe how it's gonna look? Is it gonna be sidewalk to a, a railing? Is there going to be any uh, granite curbing? How is that crossing going to look? Yeah, could you pull the PowerPoint yeah, back up? I can, yeah. I just want to just set up a sheet right now on the, the agreed program. Okay, so I can start to describe it by words. Um, I, I don't see it in my packet. So essentially, you're going to have, at the edge of the existing pavement today, you're going to install a granite Hold curb. One, maybe? From maybe. Last week. Sorry. That's okay. Oh, is there one? Let me there see if I can drown. find it for yeah. Oh, sorry. The the bridge railing is at the retaining wall at the back of the walk. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Which yep. Is it? uh, it's way at the back. I think it's the last slide. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, keep going all the way to the end. It should get to it. Yeah. So yeah, this is what we showed, showed the last month. Um, essentially, you have the edge of road of Route 28. So you have a, a six inch step up with a granite curb uh, to your six foot wide sidewalk from the front of the curb to the back of the um, barrier here. So we're calling this a, a crash barrier. It's really, a, it's like a bridge railing. Um, so that's gonna be installed on top of the retaining wall, which supports the sidewalk construction across that steep slope. Um, which is above the, the brook. So that gets built onto the slope all above the, um, before it ties into, or before it impacts anything to do with the existing head wall on the culvert that's there today. Yep. And I guess I touched on this last time, but that, that slope looks a little bit steep going down to the head wall. What, what's gonna keep things from eroding on that slope? So this is a t about a two to one slope, which typically can, when it's grassed and established, can hold itself up. Um, so that's, that's the plan here. This, this, if this cross section, uh, if we take it for its word, it's steeper than two to one on the existing slope. So yeah. that's doing some uh, retaining on its own today. So the contractor will get in there and work, you know, right off the face of the wall as they construct it and then just restore the slope, um, trying to keep a two to one level to it. All right, thank you. No further questions, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. I have nothing further, so do we have any questions or comments from anyone in the room or online? Do we know if anyone's online? There were a few. <clears throat> yeah, for some reason that, that image right there is frozen on there for some reason, I'm not sure why. Hmm. Uh, but there are, I can see them on my screen here. Mm -hmm. So we could hear them if anyone was piping up and asking to comment. <clears throat> okay, I hearing no further comments, can we have a motion? Sure, I will move that we approve the notice of intent for the town of Harwich's Route 28 road layout between Bank Street and Sacquatucket Harbor SE32-2552 and grant the requested variance. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Four and zero, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Okay, so uh, next on the agenda is uh, notice of intent for 435, boot 28, map 13, parcel S1-B2, SE32-2554, or the relocation of an unpermitted structure. Hi, my name is Sal Patel, and uh, I'm here on behalf of Value Mart, KDBC, KDB Patel LLC. And I think Bob Rigo is supposed to be on uh, the Zoom call. He's here. He's here. He's here? Yeah, I just can't see him on the screen. So okay. I don't know if he can speak, but I think he's in the middle of uh, another meeting. So okay. I would love if you could push this back a little bit. Yeah. Bob Rigo's online right now. Bob Rigo's online? Uh -huh. Okay. in a position to comment on whether you know, need a delay here. What did he say, Matt? Give me one second. Yeah, we have to be available online if we've advertised as such, so hang on one minute. I'm sorry. Um, if possible, I'd like to just uh, move the forward the the meeting a, a little forward one or two hearings. I have a conflicting hearing that about I'm about to go on in Brockton. We'll have to move you to the end of the hearings, um, if that's okay. okay. But yeah, we can. Okay. We can do that. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, next on the agenda is a notice of intent for 11 Atlantic Street, map 6B, parcel L144, to raise and replace a single family dwelling. David Little from Ryder and Wilcox, <coughs> representing Steve McCabe. We provided you with a project narrative, some photos of the site, a demolition, protocol, a construction protocol, coverage calculations, and a site plan. And I do have a conceptual um, timber pile layout I'm going, to, I'm going to pass out if you don't mind. Amy asked that this be... Um, I think we printed it out for them. Um, let's see. Well, if you, if you need more copies, I have them. Yeah, I printed it out. So the, the site is located on Nantucket Sound with a dwelling constructed in 1980. Concrete seawalls separate the upland portion of the site from the adjacent sandy beach on Nantucket Sound. And resource areas on the site include land subject to coastal storm flowage and a coastal beach. So I, I don't know if you're aware, but the Mass State building code um, has a requirement that if you invest more than half of the appraised value or half of the assessed value of a dwelling, if you, if you propose to do improvements that exceed that number, you're required to make the building FEMA compliant. So um, the dwelling itself is was is a freight is assessed at about three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Stephen wanted to renovate the entire house and expand the second story a little bit, so that triggers the reason that this is not a um, renovation and addition project versus a complete raise and replace. So. The proposed work includes the removal of the existing dwelling and the construction of a new dwelling and landscaping. About half of the site is located within a velocity zone. The new dwelling will be constructed on a timber pile foundation 
and the bottom of the lowest horizontal structural member for the new dwelling will be located at elevation 17. Um, the, the new state building code allows you to minimize the distance between the lowest horizontal structural member and the existing grade depending on the direction of the beams and how they're oriented with, reflect, with respect to the wave energy that comes toward the site. So by doing so, we comply with the FEMA regulations. I, I would say that the grade around the site varies from elevation 15 to 16. So the lowest horizontal structural member for this is going to be a foot and a half to two feet higher. Um, you don't really have performance standards for land subject to coastal storm flowage, so I use performance standards that the Chatham Wetlands Protection Regulations have to try and um, address this for you. Um, we believe that the new elevated dwelling will improve the ability of the site to absorb floodwaters. It will reduce the likelihood of displacing floodwaters to other areas, and it will also reduce the potential damage the potential of damaging other land within the floodplain resulting from floating debris or also considered collateral damage. The only impact proposed for the coastal beach is the moving, there's an existing timber stairway on the site that we would like to remove and build a new one in a different location. Uh, the limit of work on the site is approximately one foot off the property lines and it goes along the landward side of the top of the concrete um, seawalls on the property. So um, given the fact that we, it's a new structure, we have made an effort to try and reduce the impacts on the site so the building footprint itself is reduced by 185 square feet and the site coverage is being reduced by 545 square feet. We gave you um, detailed coverage calculations that explains the numbers of how we're reducing, reducing everything. We um, attended a hearing with the Board of Health for the project a couple of months ago, and as a result of that hearing, they're requiring that we install a um, an IA component to the system, so we've designed, we're going to incorporate a microfast system, which will provide um, additional envir environmental benefit to the site. So um, the, the plan, the site plan that's before you, the existing house and paved and deck areas are in red and the proposed is in black. And as you can see, we're essentially building within the, within the existing footprint and then try, generally trying to reduce all of the coverage on the site. And the numbers on the plan um, demonstrate that. So that would be my presentation. I'll be happy to entertain any questions. Thank you. Uh, I view this as a general improvement of the site. It's taking a single family dwelling that's currently on a foundation within the velocity zone and complying with um, state building code and FEMA regulations on an open pile foundation um, with a slate reduction and as well as alternative treatment for the septic, um, which it doesn't currently have. So. In general, I think this is an improvement for the site. One thing I would ask, and I don't think it should hold up the vote for tonight, um, is that the engineer provide a profile view um, of the house and how it interacts with the grade, and um, as well as having the bulkhead that's currently there on it as well, just so we can get a cross-section view and have a better understanding of height and whatnot. So, height of the... Um, grade not of the building that has nothing to do with us of course so. but um, I recommend approval and just that we get that within the week um, I don't think it should affect a decision we have the pile foundation as well as the footprint so thank you Brad um, first for any any features of this uh, property um, 
they're all in compliance. The, the record, everything shows. Everything's it. pretty old, but yeah. yes, everything we checked the old files. Everything is. Yeah. All the structures are as permitted. Okay. And um, the bulkhead's not going to change as part of this. Just the staircase. No, we um, we we actually looked at it with the idea that the owner was concerned as to whether he should replace the bulkhead at the same time. So we consulted with Bob Perry at Cape Cod Engineering and he, he looked at the structure in front of the house um, and he made the determination that it's, it's, it's in very good condition. Not so much with the, the sea walls on either side of it, but our, the sea wall in front of our structure is in, in very good shape. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get out there this time. I've been there before, but in the past, there was some vegetation in front of the bulkhead. But with recent images, it works, it's gone. Is it just sand in front of that bulkhead? I've been working on the project for almost two years, and I've, for the two years I've been working on it, it's just been sand. Yeah, if you go back to like 2018 uh, with Google Earth images, you can see some huh. uh, beach grass maybe. Um, but it's gone. It has overtopped at yeah. times, um, so I'm not sure if that partially did it, but. Yeah, but the project is not gonna impact that either way. So I, I don't think there's much you can do with this footprint. No. Um, so I think reductions and the, the tank improvement is, is, is really what you can do. So thanks. Thank you, Jim. I have no further comments. Mark? <coughs> Nothing to add, looks pretty straightforward to me. So I just have one question looking at the photographs here. I have the steps seem to have three layers. The um, and one of which appears from the photographs, I unfortunately did not get out to this area either, uh, appears to be part of the concrete wall. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yes, that is correct. So what we would be doing is removing the two timber staircases on top of each other and leaving the rest as is. Mm -hmm. So there will be a reduction in, in massing of the, of the timber stairway access to the beach. And you're, you're moving the stairs? From one, side, from one side to the other, yes. On that vein, I'd recommend that the bottom section of staircase um, be potentially aluminum or removable in the off season. Um, this area gets beat up pretty bad and many people lose their stairs so if there's a way that the bottom section could be lifted or removed in the off season that would probably be for their benefit we can do that okay thank you do we have any public comment anybody in the room yes sir Good evening. My name is Christopher Senny. I live in Brewster and have a small law firm that focuses on land use. And I represent a neighbor across the street at 11, at, sorry, at 8 Atlantic Street. Uh, his name is Gavin Archibald. And he has a concern about the height of the new structure. It will be increased and he will lose some view. He understands that um, your commission uh, doesn't get itself involved with um, view or loss of view. And in terms of your action tonight, we have no op opposition to your approving this notice of intent. Uh, if your commission feels that this is improving uh, the, uh, the environment, uh, and it looks like it is, uh, we have no objection. We have worked a little bit with David Little and also uh, Bill Crowell, who is the attorney for the applicant. They have been very forthcoming. There are elevations and renderings that are in the works but are not yet available. We are most interested to take a look at those and see, uh, if, uh, to see if we can appreciate the, the uh, potential impact to view. Again, that has nothing to do with what you're the jurisdiction you're exercising tonight. Uh, we appreciate that the applicant and their consultants have been so forthcoming. We'll continue to work with them. And all of this is in anticipation of the eventual hearing in front of the Zoning Board of Appeals where view is a factor that gets taken into consideration. So we have no objection. We appreciate the opportunity to speak. And again, we appreciate that the applicant has worked with us so well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? 
Yes, sir. Good evening. My name is Frank Gattaletta. Uh, I own the property across the street at 12 Atlantic. Uh, I have perhaps one of the last remaining original cottages in the campgrounds that's a, a seasonal <coughs> cottage. Um, I also, uh, I don't have any objections uh, to this project. Uh, I, I think it's a great improvement over what's there, uh, certainly aesthetically. Um, and I'll try to just limit my comments to what you may have, uh, maybe under your purview, and that's parking. Uh, if, if you know the campgrounds area and Atlantic Street, there's no on-street parking. And my concern is with a house of this size of five bedrooms, there may not be enough parking, off-street parking. Um, I know there's a driveway there. I know on the schematics they show three cars. I can tell you from experience, no one has small cars like that. Everyone drives pickup trucks or large SUVs. They, do, they stick out of the driveway, uh, making it difficult for me to pull out. And I'm guilty too. I have a large SUV as well. But I would, I would be in favor of allowing the applicant to have additional parking. They are losing a space on the west side of the property. There was a paved area over there that cars could park. That's going away and I, I understand I understand that why they're doing that. That's fine. But the current driveway, I think, with expanding it, could hold additional vehicles or at least larger vehicles. Otherwise, it's really going to impact the neighborhood. You know, everyone in that neighborhood uh, has large vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, these, a lot of these properties are rented. Uh, and there's tenants that come in and with a five-bedroom house, <coughs> they come in with three, four, five cars. And there's just nowhere to park. So that would be my only comment. And again, I don't know if that falls under your purview, but because it does affect <coughs> impervious surfaces or, or maybe there's a way to do it that there are permeable surfaces <coughs> that allow parking, uh, I, I would be in favor of that if that could be explored. Thank you. <coughs> So the area that he's speaking of is pretty much right at the 50-foot buffer or slightly outside if it's closer to the road. Um, if there was area that could be gravel, um, I wouldn't have an objection to it, but not nothing impervious. Well, currently we're proposing a, sh a shell drive yep. at the easterly end of the property, mm -hmm. and that could it be expanded in a westerly direction over the existing soil absorption system. Um, it would probably constitute an additional 200 square feet of shell versus an area that was going to be a, a clover fescue lawn that really requires no maintenance. Um, so that's something that is possible, but it would impact the coverage numbers that I've demonstrated to you and reducing site coverage. So go, we would end up going from 545 square feet reduction in site coverage to approximately 345 square feet. So, so it's a possibility. It's, it's, it's really up to the board, to the commission. To clarify, <clears throat> the proposed shell driveway is more or less where the existing shell drive except it looks like a larger area? Is that yes, we made it deeper. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can pull one car into the site and another car could pull behind it and then another car could pull adjacent to it. So currently okay. we're providing room for three, three vehicles. May I, may I comment? Yes, you may. Um, I'm not quite sure three vehicles could fit there. And, uh, three small vehicles perhaps, but I'm not sure three large vehicles can. And I'm not looking to uh, ask David to redesign what I've seen as far as the plans. Uh, and I think it's, a, it's a aesthetically a very nice looking house, but there is a side entrance that if that could be moved uh, towards the rear of the house, that could make room for another parking space. Um, and I don't know how that impacts the interior but it, it's just a, a thought. If you see there's a side entrance with some stairs, I don't know if that's, if you can see that in your plans, mm -hmm. that would allow room for a fourth car. David, do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, no, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, I'm just saying I, I think it would be um, better if the parking, the, a, thir a fourth spot was up near the road. The parking is 20 feet deep. 
that's going to accommodate any size vehicle. I see what you're so part, this is 20 feet deep. Mm -hmm. So accommodating another space there, which is adjacent the, to the road, would be better. There too, that's right. Be so, you, so you'd park two cars yeah. here and one on the other side yeah. of the utility okay. pole. So I, 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 was thinking, I, I would prefer not to. This is the no disturb zone. Yeah, it's very okay. close to the top this of the coastal really bank. beyond our purview. Okay, that's fine. I, I just wanted to raise the, if, it, okay, if it's not so something you can decide on, but I just, just want to raise the issue because it's going to impact the whole neighborhood. Right, but it's, I don't think it's Conservation Commission jurisdiction to decide on how many cars might or can park there. I understand you've registered your concerns. I don't know whether these are more appropriately brought up at the planning. I only bring it up because it might affect the impervious surface, and, and I know, I believe that's under your purview. Uh, so, so that's why I raise it. But I, I thank you for your time. Thank you. Yeah, I would just say that if anything changes at your next level of, of filing with the Zoning Board of Appeals or anything like that, if anything of the, the site coverage changes, then come back to us for okay. a change in plan or amendment. But I think we should um, act on this tonight, and then if there's additional, if there's a change, then they have to come back. That, that would work. Okay. I would expect, it, I would do that any regardless. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see we see people online here. Do we have anyone online who cares to comment? Or anyone in anyone else in the room? Hearing none. Okay, just uh, before I make a motion, John, I'd just like a point of clarification uh, that we're also going to be voting on a request for a variance to do work in the 50-foot buffer. Yes. Okay. Then I am prepared to make a motion. Thank you. And I will move that we approve the notice of intent for 11 Atlantic Street, map 6B, parcel L141, and approve the request for a variance to do work within the 50 foot buffer. Second. <clears throat> okay, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? None. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Four and zero. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. You too. <clears throat> Thank you. Nice. <clears throat> Next, we have um, a notice of intent for 29 Walther Road, map 16, parcel P7. To raise and replace a single family dwelling with a spa, fire pit, patio, and coastal access stairs. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, David Clark, Clark Engineering, on behalf of the Walsh family. The Walsh family is uh, online attending this meeting, as well as Teresa Sprague from Blue Flax Design, who prepared the restoration and mitigation plan for the project. <clears throat> I uh, prepared a presentation, but it's going to sound a lot like what David Little just said. Um, <laughs> it's almost the same project. Um, we have a, an existing house uh, that was constructed well over 100 years ago in close proximity to the top of the coastal bank to um, Nantucket Sound. <clears throat> a large portion of the property is also within the velocity zone, elevation 14. Um, however, um, the portion of the property where we're doing all the uh, site alterations uh, is significantly higher than the 14-foot uh, floodplain elevation. So we're in the process right now of applying <coughs> to FEMA for a, a letter of map change to uh, remove a substantial portion of this property from the floodplain. Um, but we decided to go forward with the application based on the regulations and the floodplain where it is now. Um, and if we're successful with uh, the map change, um, we uh, will we'll, we'll consult with Amy first, uh, but we, um, we're planning on um, minor alter, or not a minor alteration, but altering the foundation design of this project <coughs> basement. Um, that would be the only change. Um, so, 
the proposal is to demolish the house uh, and construct a new dwelling. Uh, the new dwelling is larger than what's there now. Uh, for that reason, we, we've moved it significantly far farther back on the site from the top of the bank. So the new dwelling uh, itself is outside the 50-foot buffer zone from the top of the bank. <coughs> um, um, if you hadn't noticed, uh, if you went out to the site, the, the bank is, is armored. There is a uh, bulkhead, substantial bulkhead, uh, spanning the entire width of the property. And uh, the landform just above that, uh, there is a, a break in the four to one slope, and that's why we're calling it a coastal bank. Um, so there is the 1,500 foot buffer from that. Um, so uh, the, just, the house is larger than what's there now. Um, Teresa's online to, to talk about the mitigation plan and, and uh, how we're meeting your requirements uh, for work, primarily within the 50 to 100 foot buffer. Uh, a small portion of the project is remaining within the no disturb zone. As you see, there's a small patio with a spa. Um, and and the, the primary reason for locating it there um, is that because we've moved the house back so far, uh, we're losing a substantial portion of the spectacular views this property has to the east. Um, right now, uh, it's obvious that the the existing house being so close to the top of the bank is well seaward of the uh, house to the east. Um, but by moving it back, um, we're, we're losing a substantial view. So we want a little bit of that back by having an at grade patio, uh, but no, no part of the dwelling will be over that 50 foot line. Uh, there's an existing Title V system. Uh, that, that will remain. It's at the rear of the property. Um, because it's outside the velocity zone, it complies with Title V. Um, and uh, the existing house um, has eight bedrooms. Uh, one of the other benefits of this project is that uh, the new house, will, uh, according to the floor plans, will have four bedrooms, but two additional rooms that qualify as a bedroom under under the Board of Health regulations, so we're, we're describing it as a six-bedroom house. Uh, but it, the net reduction is at least two and, and more closer to four. Um, as far as, as uh, construction uh, mitigation measures, we show uh, a staked uh, silt fence with wattles uh, basically going just almost to the uh, middle of the property, then down to the water, to, I mean, top to the coastal bank, and then along the bank, and then up the easterly property line. Um, another aspect of the project is uh, the stairs that grant, that give access down to the beach uh, over the bulkhead. Uh, because they're perpendicular to the line, to the, to the bulkhead, they extend quite far out. Um, and uh, the toe or the, the bottom of the stairs are, are a wash at, at uh, higher than normal tides. So the idea is to uh, have the stairs run parallel with the bulkhead uh, to mi minimize uh, or maximize the distance between the stairs and the high water mark. Um, that's it in a nutshell. Um, Teresa's here to, to talk about the mitigation. If you'd like to hear from her now or if you have questions on the, on the engineered plan, I'd be happy to answer them. I think we, we go with Teresa. Teresa, yeah. yeah. Great. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you. Teresa Sprague with Blue Flex Design. So um, what we're proposing here for mitigation is um, just under 9,000 square feet of planting um, within, mainly within the zero to 50 foot buffer zone. So on the coastal bank, um, interplanting within the beach grass to help improve diversity that's located just above the bulkhead on the coastal bank. Um, and then planting out pretty much the entire 50 foot buffer zone with the exception of the area of the proposed spa and fire pit. 
and then wrapping that planting up along the eastern and western side of the house into the 100 foot buffer zone and then extending that planting right up into the area that's currently designated as the um, as the FEMA VE velocity um, floodplain. Um, we took our cues from the abutting property to the west, which belongs to the town of um, Falmouth. I mean, I'm sorry, the town of Harwich, um, and uh, and is existing native vegetation consisting mainly of eastern red cedar, pitch pine, oak, little blue stem, and American beach grass. Um, so took our cues from that existing plant community and extended that plant community and that plant matrix um, throughout the property. Um, we have added um, some additional shrubs, including some sweet fern and some inkberry holly and arrowwood viburnum to provide some screening to the vinyl stockade fence that's located along the eastern property line. Um, but otherwise um, chose plants and plant species um, that are well suited to this site that are currently thriving um, in the uh, the conservation property located right next door. We did provide in our land management plan um, an image of the um, of the area next door. And so to provide, to just give an example of the cues that we were taking. So on page three, um, you'll see an image of the footpath that runs through that property that's owned by the, um, by the town of Harwich and has a sense of what then that extended vegetation will look like on the property located at 29 Walther. In total, we're looking at um, 10 trees, 205 shrubs, um, including bayberry, northern viburnum, uh, beach plum, uh, some sweet fern, uh, native roses, uh, inkberry holly. Trees include amelanchia, eastern red cedar, pitch pine, and uh, scrub oak. So um, we think that there'll be a substantial improvement to this buffer zone's ability to um, provide ecological services, mainly to help slow water down, help infiltrate and filter water before it reaches the water body. We do have an revetted, or I'm sorry, a, a, an engineered structure on the coastal bank um, with a bulkhead, but we certainly have a beach and water that's important to wildlife habitat and human habitat. So happy to answer any questions about the proposed planting and mitigation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before I make my comments, we, I just want to go over um, an email that came in this afternoon from an abutter, and which I did send to Dave and Teresa as well. Um, so this is from the Cranes, Kathleen and Marty Crane, who about the property. Um, they have a few concerns. They said, number one, they could they asked for screening of some sort for any AC units. Current plans expose those units to us. Those are outside the 100 foot buffer zone, so it's nothing that we can require, but I just encourage you to work together as, as uh, neighbors and maybe um, can talk to the cranes about potentially a little bit of screening. Um, two, the proposed patio is very close to the property line. What is the setback requirement? For patios, um, there is no setback requirement from property lines in the building code. Um, and then why are the stairs to the beach being shifted so close to the property line was their last question. And I'll leave that for you to answer because I don't. Um, the uh, stair relocation um, was uh, determined uh, by the clients or the, the, the property owners and their architect. Um, I would imagine that um, they, they wanted to get it off to one side of the property or the other to, so that it's not in the main view from the, the, the living space, the main living space in the center of the house. Um, and as far as the patio, um, it was my understanding there's no setback requirement under the bylaw. Um, Teresa, do you want to comment on screening? Um, I, I think you said that you had a conversation with the Walshes about that. Yeah, absolutely. So there is an existing vinyl stockade fence that runs entirely along that eastern property line between this property and the property directly to the east. 
Um, our goal is to actually screen that existing vinyl stockade fence, which is owned by the, um, the property directly to the east um, from the, the Walsh's property from 29 Walther. So we are planting, and of course we're showing only the planting within conservation jurisdiction um, at this time, but we are planting all along that fence and the uh, Walsh's goal is to really plant that heavily um, just to the west of the fence on their property in order to screen that white vinyl fence that runs along there. So um, I, there's no direct from the ground level, there would be no, um, the fence would provide adequate screening. I don't know if maybe the um, property owners to the east are thinking from upper levels. Um, of course, getting tall trees on this site will be you know, challenging, but we can certainly plant um, we are certainly planning on planting all along that vinyl stockade fence to screen that stockade fence. So that should help. Thank you. Um, and to add to that, on on the neighbor's side of the fence is a well-established Leland Cypress, Cypress Road, uh, basically mm -hmm. from the water mm -hmm. uh, to the rear of the property. Uh, so, And that's been maintained uh, in some locations uh, quite low. Um, but as Teresa said, um, there will be additional plantings outside your jurisdiction. Thank you. I just wanted to recognize that. Um, thank you for the plan revision that shows the um, hardscape for the house and just general hardscape that's on the planting plan that was on your table this evening. Um, they have a reduction in the zero to 50 uh, currently 1,552 square feet of the house is within the zero to 50. All of the actual house is coming out. Um, there is some hardscape and they're proposing a little more hardscape. So there's a net increase of 75 square feet of hardscape there. Um, but an overall kind of net reduction of everything in the zero to 50 of roughly 1,475 square feet. They are proposing an increase in the 50 to 100, which you can see on the plan and are mitigating for that. Um, I would say, I mean, this is, a, this is a vast improvement. And if you look, if you've been to the site, it's pretty much all Cape Cod lawn up to the right of the top of the coastal bank where there is some American beach grass intermixed with some seaside goldenrod, but that's really it for the site. So they're moving the whole house Farther, quite a bit back and um, reestablishing a 50 foot, um, more of a 50 foot buffer to the top of that bank, which will provide a lot more diversity um, on the site. And let's see, I would just caution you with this, the, perp, um, the stairs that are gonna be parallel to the wall. What we found this year in the town is all the stairs that we had reconstructed that were parallel to walls and not perpendicular. It's nice because they don't stick out as far, but every single one of the parallel ones got wiped out, whereas the perpendicular ones did not because they broke up wave action. So just something um, to keep an eye on as it goes forward. And of course, you know, we'll work with you if that needs to change in any way, but that was we thought we were doing the right thing by pulling it in closer, and I think it's just more of a face that's facing the water, and they've got destroyed um, all of the town stairs that were parallel this year. Um, I really don't have any questions. I think this is uh, a nice improvement for the property. They're also, you're getting, the garage was currently in the velocity zone, and you're getting the garage outside the velocity zone, which is a benefit here. Um, so no, I would recommend approval of the project. Okay, thank you. Mark? No remarks. Yeah. No, no further comments. Yeah, two comments. Um, first of all, there is a lot very good that's going on here. Pulling the house back to the line of the 50 is something we don't often see. So I mean, that, that's very positive. But I do have two comments. Um, one. Uh, a lot of planting mitigations. One thing I'd prefer to see is an expansion of the top of the coastal bank um, over um, the vast amount of plantings in, in the zero to 50 and the 50 to 100. So that's one comment to see if that's possible. I think that would be a, a real benefit to increase the top of the coastal bank. 
I, what do you mean by that? Well, right now you've got, what, what distance is that width of the top of the coastal bank? Um, from the bulkhead land, <coughs> what's that distance? It looks like it's, you know, it's, a, it's a 10 feet or so. Yeah, I would, I would say uh, maybe 15, but, but somewhere around there, five to, uh, right. 10 to 15. Right. So, interesting to hear about the potential to increase that bandwidth. And the second thing is a little bit of heartache over seeing an increase in uh, of hardscape 75 feet in the uh, 0 to 50. It is a full rebuild. Um, it would be nice to see that number zeroed out. I, I understand they want to have a spa to have a view, but having a new spa in the 0 to 50 is, is a little concerning to me. Um, so I I is there some way to zero out that new hardscape? I, I understand the house is coming back. That's, that's a fantastic change, uh, but those two points I'd, I'd like to see the discussion on. Let me uh, pass out a, a diagram. Uh, when we went out to stake the, uh, the house for viewing, we, we uh, remotely located the, the neighbor's house to the east. Um, Thank you. So the neighbor's house as shown on the plan now um, was, was given to us um, through the, the, the landscape uh, designer and uh, an architect and so we continue with it. Um, I was a little suspect of that when we, after we had filed and uh, we had the house, lo we located the neighbor's house. So you can see it's, it's closer to the water than what we show on the permitting plan. Um, so right now, where the house is, the new house is located on the on the Walsh property. Um, we're we're actually further back than the line, so to speak, uh, that's established by the neighbor's house. So moving it back any further um, would pretty much eliminate all the views to the east and 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 start. Um, Diminishing the views uh, to the southeast, uh, which uh, includes Monomoy Island and, and every and, and that section uh, to the east, uh, is one of the reasons the Walsh has bought the property. Um, and it will also require a complete redesign of the house uh, because we're maxed to the setbacks on both the east and the west side. So we would have to completely re redesign the house in order to move that back. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not suggesting moving the house back. I think you've done a great job with your design so far. But to have, I'm exploring the idea of not having a 75% increase in the new structures, which is the fire pit and the spa in the 0 to 50. So is there something that can be done? It's a 75-foot increase. And, uh, and really, I'm looking at the two options. Between the two, you've done a lot. Is there something that can be done either? to reduce that 75 and the two new structures, or can you do something um, with in increasing the coastal bank? And th those are discussion points that you know, I'd like to hear from the other commissioners on how they feel about those things. Um, it's an opportunity with a full reconstruction to do these things. And, you know. but, I mean, f uh, we thought that a 1,500 square foot plus reduction in the no disturb zone was significant and far outweighs um, something that's somewhat inert when it gets uh, installed and in that it doesn't obstruct wildlife movement because it's at grade. Um, and, uh, and really uh, looking at what we're putting back versus what's taken out, it, 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 it's, it's, almost, it's, a, it's an order of magnitude difference. Um, and. Uh, I'd like to ask a question for clarification here, because the first point you made, Brad, was about that space, whatever it is, 10 feet or so, 
land was from the bulkhead, but it's unclear from the drawings whether that's new planting or not, and it's labeled here as beach grass plantings. And on the planting plan, there's additional plants in there. Mm -hmm. On this uh, plan that you just handed out, and I guess that's just a blow up of what we already had, there are a lot of plants. But is that existing beach grass, or are you planting? The at, at some point in, in the past, uh, I don't know if it was at when the, the, the bulkhead got overtopped, um, there was a beach grass plantings because it, it doesn't look like it was natu it's natural in that they're kind of uniform in their spacing and whatnot. Um, so I, Teresa can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, where she, her dark green line is, um, that's, that's the turf lawn, not turf lawn, Cape Cod lawn that's being removed um, and, and getting planted. The, the, if you've been out to the site, there, other than the southeast corner of the property and the, and the northwest corner of the property, there's no native vegetation mm -hmm. on this site um, uh, other than the beach grass. Um, that's in the white section, the seaward of the dark green on Jesus' plant. That's in, being supplemented by yes. additional planting. So I think that in the part your question. Be, beach grass correct. Plant. Teresa, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're supplementing that beach grass area with other native plantings. That's correct. Um, we know that over time, beach grass tends to thatch out when it's not located in a dune system where it's constantly being recovered by sand. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to pro be proactive, knowing that, you know, I'm not sure when that beach grass was installed, but knowing that generally after seven years or so, if the beach grass isn't in a dune system where it's constantly being overtopped by sand, it gets thatched out over time. So we're trying to interplant um, within that beach grass, so those plants have an opportunity to get established. So as the beach grass dissipates over time, there's other native vegetation that's going to take over and do the job of stabilizing that area. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And just on Brad's other comment, I'm not personally inclined to make an issue out of, is it 75 square feet? Of coverage in the zero to 50, uh, that what? it's an increase. Yeah. Well, no, they're taken out. No, it's not an increase. Oh, uh, in the hardscape, it is. No, because it's exactly where the existing house is. Yes, but for a hardscape, there's an increase of new hardscape in zero to 50. The okay. house is being removed. It, and the, then the uh, aggregate, the total, is if you include the house, obviously. Okay, but my comment is. I'm not fine with that. Yeah, and, I, and I'm fine with that. I mean, we're here to ask questions, right? Yeah, yeah sure. Of course. So we that's why I'm asking the question. Absolutely. I'm just for me, and, and you've heard this every hearing I've been at, it, I'm not in favor of new structures in zero to 50. So that's that's my approach. So I, I thought I'd ask the questions. I, overall, I mean, it's been a fantastic removal to bring the house back to the 50. So that one question was, can you make a modification? And are the commissioners interested? The second question was, can we adjust the mitigation plan to have some gains in that that coastal bank? And w what are your thoughts, Amy? You were about to say something on this. I, I was going to echo what John said. Um, I think I think you do get gains right on the top of the coastal bank, because as Teresa said, right now, so right now it's pretty much all American beach grass with a little bit of volunteer seaside goldenrod in there. So the plants that they've proposed and they proposed some additional shrub plantings in that what's white on this plan, but these, are, these aren't these are existing, these are all new, what's been proposed there to let it naturalize over time. So you are gaining that additional too. It just doesn't show it's green here, mm -hmm. but they're also doing this area which will help it naturalize over time to what it, it should be. So, so right now, the Cape Cod lawn goes pretty much right up um, to the beach grass. Right up to Correct. the beach grass. Um, and then where the beach grass starts to the coastal bank um, is uh, anywhere from 10 to 15 mm -hmm. feet width. Um, 
didn't bring a scale. I'm sorry, but uh, I, I think we're increasing that by 25 feet, we have one more or less. No, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, there's no scale in the plan, so I couldn't tell you what Never it was. Never leave home without it. I'm sorry. Back to the mic. Um, yeah, Teresa has a, uh, a scale bar on on the title on the block on the on the right side of the her drawing. Didn't bring my glasses either. So right at the fire pit, um, the fire pit's 20 feet from the beach grass. Um, other than the fire pit itself and the patio and spa, everything all around it is planted right to the no disturb zone line. So, we're, so other than the spa, patio, and fire pit, this is all getting planted. Yeah, it's not lawn. Correct. Yeah. It's so not, not lawn. That's yeah. correct. So I guess if you could add <laughs> into the plans um, the, the increase in that top of Coastal Bank, because it's not really quantified, it, I, I couldn't tell. What you just described suggests it's bigger than what's there now. Mm. Um, it looks like that bank was planted in 2016. It wasn't there before then. And so having that documented and increased a little bit, I think, would be a nice thing to have happen here. Okay. Um, yeah, I think you can, that could be accounted for. Okay, I, I think I understand. I'm sorry. So, so we did not account for the beach grass area in our mitigation calculation because there's already existing native vegetation in that area. We're just supplementing it with native shrubs, again, for the reasons that I just stated. So in our mitigation calculation, we're only counting the area that's shown in green, which is existing Cape Cod lawn that will be planted out and restored to native vegetation. And then we're interplanting that beach grass area, but we didn't calculate. So I, if I understand correctly, Brad's asking us to also count the square footage of the area that we're showing in white, which is from the bulkhead up to where the existing Cape Cod lawn is, and then parse out the proposed shrubs that we're putting in that area. Is that correct? Well, also just documenting the dimensions of that top of the coastal bank. It looks like it's bigger than what's there now. Okay. And, and that my interest was to have that bigger than what's there now. And, and so I think you have plenty of mitigation. I, I don't think it's that's really yeah. an issue. Mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, okay. to see that top of the coastal bank have um, some real integrity to function. It, maybe it can't function that well because there's a bulkhead there. I don't know. But um, that right. seems to me to be yeah. a benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you could, you know, document those dimensions, that would be helpful. Sure. And, and, and Amy, what do we do to condition to the the mitigation area to make sure it stays that way? Is it, can we condition that in a certain way? Um, yes, you can essentially say, you know, no lawn is allowed within the zero to 50, which is essentially what they're showing. They're not showing any lawn in the zero to 50. We could do it that way. Um, we also do usually condition a survival rate after several growing seasons of the native plantings prior to requesting a certificate of compliance. I think the best way to do it is to say there's not to be any lawn in the zero to 50, um, and it must comply with the planting plan, you know, site planting plan. So you can condition it as such. Do, do we want an annual report for one, <laughs> two, or three years? I think so. This is a pretty big planting, so I would say it would be consistent with what we've done in the past to require an annual monitoring report of the status of the plantings for probably three years um, and go from there. The, the Walshes um, had a home on Fiddler's Landing on Allen Harbor and complied um, completely with that and did an, an excellent job with their planting plan and maintaining their property um, as they should. So I have confidence that they'll continue to do it on this property um, now that they're moving here. All right, thank you. No further questions. I have one additional question, which is, <clears throat> are there plans to mow the area that's seeded with grasses, native grasses and wildflowers? And, but, you know, um, would it make sense to condition either no mowing or annual mowing only mm -hmm. or something like that? Um, I'd like to hear from Teresa on that. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, there's no, there, we're, we're interplanting shrubs into that grassy area. So there's really no plan to, to mow that. The species and the seed mix that we're proposing is listed on the plan um, on the lower right hand side. So the, we're, we're, our goal is to keep these native grasses that stay fairly low so that they're not um, tall prairie grasses. For instance, we're not proposing switchgrass or Indian grass or big blue stem, anything that's gonna get in the six feet plus tall range um, in this area, um, simply for that maintenance piece and so that they don't outcompete the shrubs that we're proposing to plant in here um, to interplant. So um, at minimum, perhaps um, as we get this established, we'll, during the three year um, establishment period, um, just to keep weeds down, we'll probably do some annual mowing until we plant the shrubs. So the first year, seed we tend to get a lot of annual weeds that first year so we will mow that a couple of times to keep those weeds from going to seed and then out competing while the warm season grasses are getting established and then once that is once that's established at maximum potentially there would be an annual mowing late march early april um, until the shrubs get established again just to give them a little breathing room and allow them to establish but that would be the max. This will not be regularly mown. This is not to be a managed area. Teresa, is that in your land man in your management plan? The detail on that? Um, I don't believe it is, but we can certainly um, provide an added an additional sheet with that those would, details. That would be great to have a, okay. a guide on how this is looked at and managed over time. Perfect. Yep. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from commissioners? No comments, sir. Any further comments from the public? Anybody in the room or online? Okay, I don't hear anything further. Um, can we have a motion? Sure. I'll move that we approve the notice of intent for 20, 29 Walther Road, map 16, parcel T7. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Four and zero. Thank you. Thank you. Any revisions or additions that you have, if I could have them within the week, um, that would be great so I can draft the orders. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Have a good evening. Good night. Next, we have a notice of intent for Zero Pleasant Lake Road, map 100, parcel K4-3, seasonal dock. Good evening. <clears throat> For the record, I'm John O'Reilly. I believe the reposers may be online and listening in. Um, we're here tonight to hopefully um, get an approval for a seasonal aluminum dock in the waters of Long Pond. Um, we've designed the dock to meet the guidelines of the um, uh, Harwich, uh, both in length area and depth of water. Uh, the dock extends seven, about 71 feet from shore and has um, a total of 11 eight by four seasonal sections, which will stand on pads, about eight, 10 inch square pads uh, on the bottom. There's no jetting, there's no dredging, there's no permanency at all to this structure. Um, we have cited the structure following the seasonal dock to the north, um, those folks had gotten a, um, a seasonal dock through you folks approved. Um, they were holding 25 feet from their southern line, which is our northern line. So in order not to crowd the dock, um, we then moved our dock to the southern side of our lot. So we're 25 feet off our southern line. Um, so we're kind of following the, 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 the pattern, if you will, uh, based on the aluminum dock to the north. Um, we did meet with the Waterways Committee tonight. <clears throat> they did approve the dock as designed. They did ask 
Uh, one condition is that the dock sections not be stored on the beach. So they actually made that part of their motion. I told them that the Conservation Commission probably would be supportive of something like that. <laughs> Having talked to Amy the other day. Um, so we, um, we do show dock storage on the beach, on the plan. Obviously, um, that is not in your keeping uh, with what the policies has been. So um, in talking to the reposes, they will agree to move their structures um, off the beach by boat to a landing and then bring them to the house that's across the street. Um, be happy to answer any questions. I think we probably talk about mitigation next. Um, but again, I'd happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. Um, so we have not heard from Heritage yet, so we'll have to continue this hearing. We're not going to take a vote on it um, tonight. Um, so this is a 71, 72 foot long seasonal dock with pads uh, at the seaward edge of the dock. There's 3.8 feet of water and the structure is greater than 65 feet from adjacent structures. There's no inland bank to this. It's very flat and sandy. So the edge of the wetland is the mean annual water line. Um, after seeing the initial plan, I did reach out to John and said, um, the commission does not um, allow uh, off-season storage, typically within the zero to 50 foot buffer zone, which the vast majority of this lot is because it's na long and narrow right along the pond edge. Um, and he confirmed with his clients and they will store it at their property across the street. Um, we had a conversation about mitigation. The commission in, in 2022 late 2022 put a requirement for, of mitigation for structures that are in resources versus the different buffer zones. Um, and especially for uh, saltwater docks, you've been consistent with requiring uh, mitigation at a four to one ratio for saltwater docks. Freshwater docks, um, we may have had one in the meantime, and I don't believe we required the four to one but I think the intent is to, in, in, in order to give something and have a dock in a resource area, the commission could require some mitigation for that. Um, and looking at the property, I've been there a few times, even though it's right near the water, it's extremely sandy and exposed. It would be very hard without a lot of soil augmentation to get anything established on the site. The only thing that's going to establish there is things, things that want to naturally, but I think planting would be extremely difficult. Um, and I looked at planting across the street as well, but that it's all bisected from the resource area by Route 124 and doesn't really <laughs> add to the interests of the wetland of Long Pond. So what I would like to put on the table for discussion is that the site is potentially mitigation constrained and that you look at potential in lieu fees um, for this instead of on site mitigation. And that would be at the $4 a square foot um, at a fee of a total of $1,488 where we could potentially do other improvements to other wetland resource areas of the town that would have more meaning than this. Um, it's very sandy and open there, and I, I think it would be extremely hard to get something to establish on that pond edge unless it wanted to naturally. So I would recommend, well, I can't recommend approval yet because we haven't heard from Heritage, but I have no further comments. Okay. Brad. Um, no comments. I, I think my feeling is that for the freshwater docks in places like Long Pond, that I don't even see that mitigation is required. Yeah, I uh, wasn't uh, sure, and that's how our yeah. regulation reads. I wanted to be covered. If it was a different type of substrate or vegetation, aquatic vegetation situation, but in that coarse cobble bottom, I can't see any impacts to the stock. So uh, unless it's a, I feel like we're handcuffed by the new rules. I, I don't see any need to mitigate. I'm sure the client would be happy with that too. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a great way to start the discussion, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you're not too surprised. Uh, no, <laughs> no. I have no additional comments, Jack. I have no comments. I have nothing. 
I was just reading the regs and I was like, wanted to be prepared for a conversation about it, so. It, it, there could be a location in Harwich where the pond habitat could right. receive some impacts, but I, I can't see it happening there. Okay. Thank you. Great. So we'll wait for natural heritage. Yeah, so let's I, continue for two weeks. Yeah, they, on the natural heritage response to the herring run, it was more of a time constraint. Right, T typically that's like what At the is. end of May, I think, was what they wanted. Yep. Um, that's what I'm expecting anyway, but we can't yeah, do anything until Yeah, they usually don't allow in water installation until after May 31st. Yeah, end of May, something like that. So our next meeting is two weeks from now, which is April 3rd. April 3rd. I'd ask for a continuance until we hear from Okay. Unless there's other people to ask. Do we have further comments in the room or online? Hearing none. Hearing none, I will make a uh, motion that we continue the public hearing for the notice of intent for Zero Pleasant Lake Road, map 100, parcel K4-3, until our meeting of April 3rd, 2024. Thank you. Okay, further. Discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Mr. You're welcome. Mr. Chair, um, so can we go back to the Patel notice of intent before we do the amendments? So next we have, do you have your representative online as well? Yes. Okay, so we're going to consider a uh, notice of intent. Or 435 Route 28, Map 13, Parcel S1 B2, SE 32 2554, for relocation of an unpermitted structure. Please identify yourself. Hi, hi my name is Sal Patel. I'm representing KDB uh, Patel LLC Corp. Okay. And your representative. Uh, for the record. I'm sorry. For the record, uh, my name is Bob Rigo. I'm with River Hawk Environmental. I'm the civil engineer on the project. Okay, thank you. Do you have a presentation? Or uh, describe yes. the project? Yes. Should I share? I'm sorry. Should I share my screen or um, so you can see the, the, the plan? Or would you just like me to present without it? Ken, if you like, we also do have, we each have the plans in front of us as well as your additions that you sent over this afternoon. Okay, all right, I'll just, I'll just uh, quickly go through it then. Um, so this is uh, the location of uh, existing um, convenience store gas station on the um, southerly side of Route 28. Um, there's an existing bordering vegetative wetland, which exists um, east, just east of the property. Um, the, the owners um, installed a fence along the, the wetland line, and they installed a small shed structure to the uh, southeastern portion of their building. Um, both of those were within the 50-foot buffer zone. They did that without um, first getting permission. Um, so we're proposing to move the, the shed structure um, over uh, to the western portion of the site that's just uh, within the 100-foot buffer, but outside of the 50-foot buffer. And um, we're proposing to keep the fence, uh, but in exchange for keeping the fence, we're proposing to, uh, some mitigation measures in the 50-foot buffer. Um, they originally installed the fence as a measure to stop um, litter and solid waste and debris from ending up in the wetlands and, and the need to um, uh, repeatedly clean it out. So they, they installed the fence in hopes that that would stop the, the wind blow debris from ending up in the wetlands. Um, so they're proposing to keep that. It represents about um, 15 square feet of impact when you include the, the fence and the footings for the fence within the 50 foot buffer. They're proposing to uh, mitigate along that uh, 50 foot uh, buffer zone, about 1,380 square feet of that area 
with a total of 19 shrubs um, that were just selected to be um, native shrubs that were on your list of uh, the, the Harwich list of native species. Um, uh, shrubs were selected off that that would be appropriate for the location that's um, next to a, a, the paved parking lot and, and very close to the roadway. Um, we think that, that we've uh, sent in today, just today, uh, we sent in a request for a variance for that to maintain that fence within the 50 foot buffer. Um, and um, basically documented why we think it's it's reasonable to keep the fence there. Um, the one being that the, the minimal impact of the, the 15 square feet along with the mitigation. Um, the wildlife habit, the wild, in terms of wildlife protection, um, I think it actually acts as a better um, protector for the wildlife. Uh, it doesn't allow them to enter into the parking lot or under the, or potentially under the roadway and have uh, an accident with a vehicle. Um, and then in terms of just keeping the litter and solid waste out of the wetlands, it's just a protection of the direct protection of the wetland resource area. Um, and that's, uh, that's about it, I guess. Thank you. Do you have anything else to no. say? Okay, thank you. Amy? Um, thank you for um, finding a new location for the structure that is more in line with um, where we would allow something. So the proposed relocation would be on existing pavement um, on the site at, and straddles the 100 foot buffer zone line. I did run it by other departments because I want to make sure we don't approve something and then all of a sudden you have an issue with somebody else, um, another permitting department. So um, the health department had no issue because you have a tight tank so you don't have a leach field there so you're not on top of your tight tank. Um, the building department, I didn't have comment from, but it looks like you meet your setbacks um, from property lines. The planning department did say, um, regardless if you were to keep it where it is or, or move it, you have to go for site plan review. She did not think it would be a huge issue, but you need to make, she didn't want to weigh in totally. She didn't do a formal review because she needs to see how it might impact your parking. Um, so you will have to go to the planning board for that. Um, I recommend approval of where the re relocation is. Remains to be seen what type of foundation you can have because you are in a flood zone. So you would need to put, you'd need to make it flood compliant for that flood zone um, according to mass building code. So I think that's usually like flood vents and things like that. No utilities below flood grade. Um, but the location, I think, is, a, is appropriate for us. Um, I would recommend the variance for the, um, for the fence here. Um, I've been to the site, and just in general, when you have a, a store or something like that, convenience store, you tend to, you know, people, there's a lot of people around. There's things that inadvertently get off the property. So one, I think it can, helps contain debris that blows around. And also, um, as you said, do we really want wildlife wandering into the site as well? And it's right up near Route 28. So I think the, the um, fence isn't a bad idea to keep, especially with the um, additional plantings to create a buffer there. I just recommend a couple changes to your planting plan um, because it is, um, even though it's near wetland, it's um, kind of a dry, exposed area. So service berry, those tend to be trees after a little while. So I would re recommend something like beach plum instead, because I think I, I can only imagine you may not want trees right out front there. Um, plus, they're more of a freshwater. Um, and this is brackish. Um, so I'd recommend beach plum instead of service berry. I would recommend sweet fern instead of American holly, which also tend to like a fresh water wetter system. And instead of swamp rose, I would recommend Virginia rose, but that's an easy change that Mr. Rigo can make to his plan if you're in agreement with those. Yeah. So um, I would recommend, I would recommend approval of, um, of that change. I think we need to give them a time frame though for when, because it's a three-year permit, 
So I think we need to give them a more aggressive timeline for when the existing shed needs to be moved. Okay, thank you. Mark? <coughs> Does that structure have a uh, wood floor or concrete floor? Uh, the uh, shed? Yep. Uh, wood. Wood. How are you going to take it out of there? Uh, so it's like on four like concrete blocks, like the wood. Uh, so how are you going to remove the building? Oh, just like uh, pick it up by crane and put it on um, you know, what we call a long bed. Yep. Okay. So I've contacted a couple of people and they're willing to do it, so. Okay. Great. That's it. Jim. Okay, my only question has to do with um, if this new location has to go through site plan review, should we be voting on this prior to it getting approval through site plan review? I okay. think we have to. They file, um, but if it gets changed, if anything changes, they have to come back to conservation. But we're voting on what is in front of us tonight. So, okay. yeah, I think we have an obligation. We have to act. Um, we can't wait for another permitting department. So we couldn't continue this hearing pending the the approval of the planning board on site plan review. No, because it's not for a conservation, re like a, they're not, you're not continuing for a redraft in the plan for a conservation wetlands protection act reason. You're Except that if the plan gets redrafted, mm -hmm. it may raise conservation issues depending on what the redrafting does. Right, is. but we don't know that. So if it does, then they have to come back to conservation to change it. So basically, you guys are saying like if uh, the they have a problem with that new location, they have to come back and uh, do like another location if the site plan and everyone's out according to it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that was my only question, Jeff. Yeah, my only thing is that I don't like the fence. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure we wouldn't permit it if it came to us as a new proposal. Um, it, it's a vinyl fence, that's the material in the no disturb zone. Um, I, I think it's good that you moved the shed, that was the biggest concern, that's done. I don't think I have the votes for the fence, so I'm not going to beat it any further, but I, I, I wouldn't support the fence typically. Yeah, I agree with Andy on, on the fence, but you know, rather than having trash filling up the wetlands, I don't want to interrupt you, but I s take care of the trash before it gets there. Yeah, that's, I understand. That's the, the onus is on the property owner to take care of the trash before mm -hmm. it gets there. I understand that too. People just throw like cigarettes and stuff like inside. I know. So it's, it's hard to get it out of there. So it's easier like if. You got to speak at the microphone if yeah, you're going you to speak and, and say who you are. Side. Sorry. Hi, I'm Mary Patel, and I'm just here with him. But um, it would be easier, like you know, for cleanup just because people throw stuff, like even with like little shot bottles and like, they, yeah, it's hard to clean up then, yeah. No, I, I understand that's a practical yeah. matter. I, I and just we, we don't want to go into the wetlands, like, you know, try and like I understand, grab I, I think it's practical for it's you just, want yeah. to have it, it's installed so it's practical not to take it out. Yeah. I just think if it did come for us as a new proposal, it would be sense. hard for us to approve that structure. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, any more discussion here? You're all set, Brad? Yep. Any other comments in the room from, or online from the public? Hearing none. I will you? make a motion that we approve the notice of intent for 435 Route 28, Map 1-3, Parcel S1-B2 and approve the request for a variance for a fence in the 50-foot uh, buffer zone. I'll second. Moved and seconded. Anything further? I'd just like to actually offer an amendment. Go right ahead. The please. existing fence in the zone. I will accept that amendment. Okay. I assume you 
accept that, Mark. Okay. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? One opposed. Three and one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so All right. Keep going. now we have a request for an amended order of condition for 31 Shore Road, Map 2, Parcel B1-7, SE32-2430 for a boulder revetment. We have someone here. Yeah, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. This is Aaron, uh, for the record, Bob Rogers with GAF Engineering on behalf of uh, the applicant, Vincent Petroni, this evening. Um, if I may, the um, so this is my this is my third time before the commission over the past several years um, in an attempt to rectify the erosion that's taking place on the property at the toe of the slope. Um, we initially. Uh, performed a, a soft solution with choir logs and choir blankets and beach grass planting. And, um, and that uh, did not uh, survive the, the, the recent storms. The, the current order of conditions um, allows the resetting of um, boulders and stone across um, the shorefront of this property, um, as well as what's um, depicted on the plans in terms of the reconstruction of the, the patio and the, the moving of the stairs. Um, and it was an approval for a more aggressive attempt um, with the soft solution choir, choir logs, choir blankets, beach grass plantings. Um, but there, there is an, and always was um, a, a number of boulders uh, across the, the toe of the slope on this property. Um, you can see from plans that, you know, we're not, a, we're not attempting to go above where it, the existing stone is. There's a, it's, it's a tapered design. What, what we're asking for is is to be allowed uh, to place uh, three or four levels of larger five to six ton boulders at the base of the slope with no loss to the beach and and really just to rework um, the slope at, at its present grade and in the area where the stones exist, um, if you will, on the west side of the property, um, we like to match into the neighboring property, which I'm told is one of the older um, sections of revetment in in that neighborhood. So we want to we want to match that and then just taper to the east, um, and and uh, really just keep it as minimal and shallow as we can with the use of the larger stone to prevent these. Uh, larger storm events like we just experienced uh, this past winter from from chewing that up. Um, we, we haven't abandoned the, the use of um, the, the beach grass and sand planting and, and choir blankets that's that's still depicted on um, the second sheet. Um, but we're we're asking the commission to approve the use of the larger toe stone um, in harmony with what is present on either side of, of the property. And, um, so that hopefully this will at least get us to the point where there's much less uh, maintenance required in terms of the addition of sand and the, and the repairing of uh, the vegetation after, after storm events. So I'd, I'll just leave it at that and, and defer to Amy's report and to any questions that uh, the commissioners or the uh, neighbors might have. Amy. Thank you. Uh, I do have some concerns about this proposal. Um, 
and we've spoken, you know, about about them over time. But um, your pro the property of 31 Shore Road has a couple of different resource areas here. Um, where you currently have rocks, it is a coastal bank, and it's been over top this year. So I've actually you can see the erosion behind it. You can see that it's coastal bank material. It's coarser material with some layers and some small stones, which is typical glacial till. The area that you're proposing to add rocks to is a traditional coastal dune with windblown sand deposits. Um, your application for an amendment did not include how your proposal meets the performance standards for both Coastal Bank and Coastal Dune. Um, so that would be something that we would be looking for. Um, traditionally, according to the Wetlands Protection Act, Coastal Dune, the, the landward or lateral movement or vegetative cover of a coastal dune is not to be impacted. Um, so I would be interested to, to see your, how you would meet the performance standards for Coastal Dune. Recognizing that there is hard structure to the east and west, the west being a groin, um, the property to the west does not have a hard solution. It is Coastal Dune as well, who's been doing sand nourishment, planting, and matting. Um, to the east uh, on this property, there is an existing um, lawful um, stone revetment that has been overtopped and compromised. It's tough because this is only a 30 to 40 foot stretch of area and water does funnel here a little bit. So I understand the need. Um, but rocks are really to protect pre-78 dwellings that are an imminent threat. Um, to erosion and to my review this doesn't appear to be for that. Um, I'd be interested to hear what you say and also what um, your interpretation of the how this meets the performance standards are but at this point I would really like to ask the County Coastal Processes Specialist Brian McCormick to, to review this filing um, he has a large background in coastal geology. He's a free resource for the town, um, and so you will not be, you would not be charged for his services. But I would be interested in having him review the plan as well as come out to the site if you and your client were amenable to that. And I have no further comments. Sure. So, so we have no objection to that. Um, Amy, um, I think, you know, we've, you and I have been out there mm -hmm. a, a number of times. Um, certainly to the west, uh, I'm sorry, to the east of the existing stairs, it's, it's clear that there are boulders there that are, um, and, and not to say that we are trying to engineer this so that it's a flat case for Batman or, but, but so, so there, our boulders to the east of the existing stairs and the current order of conditions um, did allow us to reset those mm -hmm. and to supplement that with both some smaller stone and with the, the soft solution. Mm -hmm. And then to the east where this, excuse, <laughs> I'm backwards again, uh, to the west where the stone groin is on the neighboring property um, what we found when we installed the, the initial repair was that, um, you know, the duckbill anchors were hitting boulders. There, there were boulders that are, that are covered by um, sand and, and vegetation when, it's in, when the vegetation is um, in, in good health. Um, but as soon as the storm came in and took away the sand and the vegetation, you, you're left with sort of a vertical face of uh, the existing stone. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I'm entirely agreeable um, to continue tonight to perform the additional review um, that you suggest. Um, but there's no question that, that there are boulders um, 
from one end to the other of the shorefront of this property um, in different varying degrees of um, visibility, if you will, or exposure. Um, and so, um, you know, we feel like this is um, something that is going to provide an anchor for the sand and vegetative surfacing and and that that is still going to be a necessary element of of maintenance for this property um even once you know if this uh, becomes constructed to the degree that we're showing it on the current plans okay thank you i'd like to ask questions to weigh in brad um, I think Amy's recommendation to have that peer review is really important. And um, from what I've seen, I, I, I don't really feel like it's an amendment. It almost should be a new filing if they're going to depart that far from what was, you know, permitted initially. So, but I guess we'll cross that bridge when it, the time comes. It, it is, it does seem to be a hard challenge to um, authorize a full revetment across this location. Um, I agree with Amy's recommendation. I agree with Amy as well. Thank you. Um, I agree with Amy. I just want to clarify <clears throat> the work that we authorized. None of that work has been done. I, so the original permit was, but they have amended already, and the most recent amendment, correct me if I'm wrong, Bob, the original work was done, but the most recent amendment, the fiber rolls were not done. They weren't done, correct, for the full uh, shorefront of the property. That's right. correct. Correct. And the original ones were completely wiped out by the recent storms. Yes. So, yep. yes, the, yes, the extension of that work wasn't done, but I think uh, Mr. Petroni and, and our office are in agreement that had that work been done, it would not have withstood those two recent storms. Okay, my other question is about <clears throat> the groin there. The, the plan here shows a groin, groin going right up to <clears throat> the existing dune or bank or whatever it is. But looking on Google Earth, it doesn't seem to extend anywhere near the, um, the existing dune. So I, I'm, which is the case here? Are, are you portraying stones in the groin which are buried by sand here? There is a gap out in the field. Are there photographs other than this, you know? I'm looking. I Google took yeah, we, photograph. We have many, many photographs, Mr. Chairman. I apologize okay. for not uh, having provided those. But but that um, that western section of Mr. Petroni's property is the area where um, the boulders on his property were covered with sand. Oh. Okay. It, well. When you're finished, I have a, a couple of things to put. <clears throat> right. Well, I'm done. I guess if if we're going to table this mm. for further consideration, I'd just like to make photographs of what's really going on there, part of the record. Yeah. Thank you. Very good. Go ahead. Thank you. I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, if we're going to continue, I would like to know if it could be possible for you to explore the extent by pro just by probing of what, if any, rocks are, are underneath there, as, as you claim there are, to have a better understanding of what's, what's mm -hmm. under there. Um, so that would be limited to on our, on our property, correct? Understood. Because that, that, I mean, that groin is almost entirely on the neighbor's property. Understood. Um, I just want to have a better understanding of the extent of what is actually there underneath. Um, I think it'll help us be able to make a decision better. Um, also, 
if you're um, in, you'll be having to expand on a performance standards narrative on how this um, pro you believe the project meets the performance standards for Coastal Bank, Coastal Beach, and Coastal Dune. Um, I would also like maybe a little bit more information. We want to make sure whatever gets permitted is not having an adverse impact to an abutting an abutting property. So. If you could describe what mitigating efforts might be put in t to prevent uh, adverse impact, especially to the neighbor to the west. And in the meantime, I can try, and I'm, I'm more than happy to invite you um, to um, the site with Brian McCormick. Um, Bob, if you'd like to go, as well as any commissioners who'd like to be interested. Um, but I do think, in, so we normally continue for two weeks. I think we might need a little more time because he usually does a report after that. So if it would be possible for a month continuation. Yeah, understood. I'm, we definitely like to be there at, at any time that mm -hmm. um, the property is being reviewed um, by, yep. you, by your, uh, I call him your consultant just for lack of a better term maybe. But, and so, uh, and a one month continuance is, is perfectly acceptable to be able to accomplish that. Wonderful. I just want to, before we wrap anything up, I just want to make sure that we do um, cover the base of asking if anyone from the public would, would like to make any comments. Absolutely. So, there we go. Do we have anyone in the room who is wanting to make comments or ask questions or online? There do not appear to be any okay. further comments from the public. So, <clears throat> we have a motion. Yeah, for hearing uh, no further comments, I just have one question before I make a motion. Amy, what would be the date of that meeting? April 17th. 17th, okay, fine. I will move that we continue the hearing on the request for an amended order of conditions for 31 Shore Road, map two, parcel B1-7, SE32-2430 to our meeting of April 17th, 2024. Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Four and zero, thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. You as well. So <clears throat> next we have an amended order of conditions, a, a request for an amended order of conditions and a request for an extension for the same mm -hmm. property. Shall we take those together? Yeah, they're tied together, so. so this is a request for an amended order of conditions for 31 Shore Road, map mm -mm. two. No, that's what we just oh, did, <laughs> It's all right, it's getting. Yeah, it's getting <laughs> <coughs> For, this is a request for an amended order of conditions for 602 Queen Anne Road, map 83, parcel S2, SE32-2487 for trash removal and planting, additional mitigation, landscaping and patio, and a request for an extension of an order of conditions for 602 Queen Anne Road, map 83, parcel S2, at SE 32-2487 for trash removal and planting, additional mitigation, landscaping and patio. So can we, do we have an advocate here? Is anyone here to discuss this item or these two items? I feel like I can if there's not anybody here. Um, if they're on the phone, you have to hit star six. There we go. Hello? Hello. Hi, Mr. Norlander. Yes, thank you. 
If you would introduce yourself and describe your request. Okay. Yes, my name is Dr. David J. Nordlander, and I'm um, I've worked closely with Amy on on this property uh, since uh, purchasing it a few years ago, and um, we're requesting an amendment to the uh, initial order of conditions uh, because as we cleaned up the uh, original order of conditions, we realized that the area of um, of quite a bit of trash and other items extended from the inland bank uh, near the wetland into a, a, a creek area that seems no longer to be uh, running. There's, there doesn't seem to be water movement, but it's a pre prior creek. And there's quite, we, we found on, we, we had some small excavating equipment, but we found uh, that there was, were several layers of, of kind of asphalt shingles as well as glass bottles and metal and other things that extended from the inland bank where it was very extensive into the creek area. And so we're just actually requesting to continue the same cleanup work uh, to the west side of, of the map where the creek is so that we can remove what we what we found in, in the process, which is kind of the same problem, a, a lot of glass and metal and some of these asphalt shingles, uh, roof shingles and other, and other items. And then just, in, and, as, and Amy knows this uh, project well, but when we, the reason we asked for an extension, um, we found initially that um, we had a report by Bob Perry, who was very helpful from Cape Cod Engineering. And when we started to remove um, some of the trash from the inland bank initially, um, we kind of approached it by, by peeling away and the ground was rather hummocky and there was vegetation on, on then scrub, kind of scrub trees and bushes on top of it. And we found in excavating that, that it was layers of glass bottles, actually hundreds of glass bottles, many of them intact, but then also um, glass shards and metal that had kind of leached out through rainstorms down the inland bank and and into the into the um the lake area there so when when we were excavating it just was actually a much bigger problem than we realized because we uh we actually did much of the work by hand and and rake after some initial um excavator machines removed some of the top cover and that's where we just found that there was so much glass and shards and metal that we we really wanted to clean that area out further before we put vegetation anywhere because we didn't want the same problem of vegetation growing upon this kind of um, area of heavy of heavy glass bottle um, uh, you know however they got there and and again the reason for extension is we found as we the inland bank went over to the creek um, it wasn't as as heavy but we found as we got to the creek area there were similar problems that we, we really wanted to clean up. We don't think that in the creek area there'll be much, uh, if any, impact on vegetation um, because it looks like you could kind of scrape the surface without impacting any any trees or or vegetation in that creek area. So um, so anyway, but that's that's the reason that it just was an extensive problem that we needed more time and then also just to extend it into this creek area. We just want to be thorough to kind of return it to a, a pristine environmental condition. Okay, thank you. Amy. If the commission remembers the site um, prior to the Norlanders owning it and prior to it, the house being rebuilt, there was a number of cottages and outbuildings and sheds and all kinds of various other buildings that got demolished on this property. Um, those previous owners treated the property like a dumping ground. Um, and having been there when it was like that, I, I don't doubt that they're still finding things um, coming out of the dirt here. So the Norlanders have worked extensively to get as much as they can, but they're still finding stuff and they're finding stuff as you get towards the outlet of the pond, which was created 
by man um, back when, you know, for drainage and for the cranberry industry. Um, so it's, it's an intermittent stream at this point. It's not a perennial stream. Um, and it does have a bank to it. So what you're asking is to kind of very gently scrape away at that without harming the vegetation because um, it's, it's mostly just dirt and leaf debris under the trees in there. Um, to scrape right. out what you can of any of the debris that's there um, and continue in the area where the major dumping was, which is along the pond edge and back of the house. Um, they have done the cedar plantings in the front of their house. They did install the patio, not, not the hot tub yet, um, which is part of the permit. So the amendment is to extend the cleanup area to the channel the old channel area and the extension is just to give them more time to adequately clean this um, your extensions are typically three years um, because your permit is actually still valid until January of 2025 <coughs> which is almost a whole year away my recommendation is that you get two years on top of that um, in, in effect giving you you know three more almost three more years from from now to do it um, I would love, if possible, the planting to start next spring, um, just to kind of put a little more onus to, to clean it as best as you can. Um, it was a tough project for the commission in a way to um, approve, even though it is um, an area that was heavily dumped on, just because there is, uh, ex there is, um, impact to the boarding vegetated wetland um, that had to happen mm. in order for it to be cleaned. So I'm in favor of it. I just would a favor, you know, essentially two years from now and um, mm. just to kind of work with me to see if enough has been done so that planting can start next spring. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, comments from commissioners. I, I don't have a strong opinion. It, it, you know, I remember it was permitted. The, the disruption on the pond side just seems more than I ever anticipated, but um, I don't know enough about this, so I think I have to go with whatever Amy's recommending. Jim. No additional comments, Jim. I know there's a lot of debris in there. I'd seen it quite some time ago. Um, I guess my only question is, as they clean that, will that lower the bed of that ditch? I don't believe so. Um, from what David, Mr. Nor Norlander, you can describe a little bit more. You're not pr proposing really excavation, um, you know, major excavation of the the banks there. No. More more of a scraping uh, of a few inches, just to you know, just to see how how the extensive the problem is. The, the surface level, it was fairly extensive. Would you be amenable to... So we just to, hope to kind of probe. Sorry. Would you be amenable yeah, go ahead. after you did it to have me out there and I can determine whether the slope needs to be matted and seeded in order to maintain stability? Yes. One additional question, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. For Amy, in your opinion, will the zero to 50 here be restored to what it should be given the order of conditions? I believe so, yes. Um, their replanting plan was, was very nice. And it wasn't just pristine, it wasn't just native vegetation that was there, it was a lot of invasives and whatnot too, so. Um, but there you know, was a healthy buffer to the pond. Yeah, there was, so. There, and there still is, um, it's smaller now because they did have to do some excavating, but um, I do believe that the restoration that was approved um, will replace that. It may take a little time to fill in, but it will, it will happen. All set. So my question is, <clears throat> what is the process here that resulted in having to excavate to dig out trash? That is, it sounds almost like an archaeological dig. I don't, it doesn't sound to me like that 
illicit trash disposal has been going on long enough to require excavation. So I know, has there been fill brought in on top? Is it just leaf litter and whatever decaying for several decades? A variety of it types is, of debris yeah. that had been put there. Well, I can, yeah. Wait, hang on a sec. Let. It was a whole okay. property that got, stuff just got tossed in there over a lengthy period of Very time. long period of time. Long period Settled of time. down, got in there. Uh -huh. There was, so what you're finding now, and David can weigh in, but you're finding hopefully the last of it, stuff that was on the top, like the paint cans and the um, detergents and um, the superficial trash, that was gone, that was cleaned up before, for the most part, before the Norlanders bought it. But it's the stuff that's over years that was tossed and remained and got crushed into the soil that's still coming up. It's going back about two generations. Yeah. So more than a few decades. Yeah, and we did. And, and what we found just, we, we tried to carefully peel back from the inland bank and it was, I mean, Amy came over and I showed her, we, we retained some of it. The um, there just was a shocking number of glass bottles just continually as we raked, we, we just, we just come up with, you know, mm -hmm. 10 to 20 glass bottles at a time. And that was what was kind of shocking, but the whole bank had, had kind of this la few layers of glass bottles instead of soil. So that was why we peeled back there to make sure we could get rid of that because we didn't think vegetation would grow well above it. It was so much glass. It's a lot of glass. So you're not thinking there's going to be a point where it's going to be better just to leave what's there there and put, Hopefully put not. some uh, topsoil on top of it? So glass in general is is benign and inert. So if you're just finding little bits and pieces of that over time, I think that would be acceptable. Yeah. We're not going to get every. You're not going to get every single little piece, probably. But um, I think right. we give him the extra two years on top of what he's already got to continue with it. Um, maybe in a year from now, David, um, kind of report. That would actually be good. We could condition that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, next spring, report your findings mm -hmm. and let us know if you're. You know, you're ready to plant. That would be okay. helpful. Okay. Sure. Sure. Okay. Any so this is an amendment and an extension. Further comments from the commissioners? Any comments from the public in the room or online? Uh, hearing none. Okay. Hearing none, I will move that we approve the amendment to the order of conditions and an extension to the amended order of conditions for an additional two years for 602 Queen Anne Road, map 83, parcel S2, SE32-2487. Second. Any further discussion? None. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Four and zero. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have a request for an extension of an order of conditions for 26 Old Kent Ground Road, Map 30, Parcel C15, SE 32-2443 for a single family dwelling, driveway, septic, and grading. We didn't have a voting quorum for this request at the last meeting, so we tabled it with no comment. Um, the owner has just started construction this winter um, due to a variety of reasons. Thus far, everything is going well. I did a site visit. Um, this is their first extension request, and I would recommend a three-year extension. So we don't have anyone in the room who has to uh, recuse themselves. Okay. Discussion. Nothing from Mark, Jim. No comment. Brad. I have no comments. So. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I will make a motion that we approve the extension 
for the order of conditions for 26 Old Camp Ground Road, uh, map 30, parcel C15, SC32-2443 for a period of three years. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Four and zero. <coughs> <coughs> Okay, now we have a request for a certificate of compliance for 32 Dunes Road, Map 5, Parcel W1-52, SE 32-1498, to construct additions. This was an old permit, and there's a newer one that superseded it that we've also granted a certificate of compliance for. This was caught in a title search. The property is in the process of being sold and it's a hindrance on the deed. We have done a site visit and found all the work to be in compliance. Um, and again, there's more active, more recent permits that superseded it. So, um, we would recommend a certificate of compliance. Okay. Any comments from the commissioner? No comments, sir. None. <clears throat> We have a motion. Sure. Uh, I'll move that we approve the issuing of a certificate of compliance for 32 Dunes Road, Map 5, Parcel W1-52, SE 32-1498. Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Four and zero. Okay, <clears throat> now we have. Um, There's four of them if you want to. Four requested certificates of compliance for 443, Route 28, Map 13, Parcel S1 30, uh, SE 32 737, SE 32 Seven six eight SE thirty two dash seven seven five and SE thirty two dash one eight five six. Yes, sir. My name is Kevin Meter with uh, CD Meter LLC, the owner of, of the property. I purchased this property in twenty eleven. Um, I am requesting uh, certificates of compliance. I'm currently in process of selling the property and we found uh, these four orders um, were not completed by the previous owner. Um, I, I purchased this in 2011. There's one that's 2007, which is the fourth one. And then I think the, the prior three are from 1990s. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just trying to um, clear these out um, so that we can get a clear title and, and um, um, sell the property. Okay, thank you. Amy? So the first three that have numbers in the 700s, um, I recommend certificates of compliance for those. All of those permits were then superseded by the SE 32 1856 one. The, um, in around 2006, the Dairy Queen burnt down. So the, the 1856 number is the rebuild. So essentially all the older ones were wiped, I mean, for all intents and purposes, they don't matter because everything got redone in um, 20, 2006. So for those three, I'm recommending, I'm, I'm recommending a certificate of compliance for all four, but those three are a little bit easier. Um, the 1856 one was the rebuild, and as per the order of conditions, it did require an as-built site plan um, to be done. And I wanna kinda honor what the commission required back then, so we did have them do an as-built site plan and I do see that Tom Stello the surveyor is online if you have any questions from him so it's essentially a, a rebuild of the same thing um, there is a concrete sidewalk that goes around the structure between the driving area and the building I think that's something that the Commission would have permitted it's for access and safety um, and 
other than that, I think it's just important that we have now an accurate plan of what's on the site and that the new owners will have an accurate plan going forward of what's there. Um, and then, so that's essentially, that's essentially it. So I'd recommend certs of compliance for all four of the 443 Route 28 permits. Okay, thank you. <coughs> No comments. None. I have none. Anybody else online? There's nobody else in the room. <laughs> Anyone else from the public have any questions or comments on this? Hearing none. Hearing none, I will make a motion that we authorize the issuing of certificates of compliance for four permits, all four being at the same location. So I'll read the uh, location out first and then read the permit numbers. The location would be 443 Route 28, Map 13, Parcel S1 30. Permit numbers are as follows SE32 737. SE32-768, SE32-775, SE32-1856. Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Four and zero. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. we'll have these ready um, Friday. Do you want us to call you? Or email? Yeah, because yeah, they have to be physically brought to the Registry of Deeds and um, signed there, brought in there, and recorded. Okay? All right, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, we have uh, a request for a certificate of compliance for 29 Snow Inn Road, Map 8, Parcel P4. SE 32-777. This is another that was picked up by somebody doing a title search um, on sale of a property. This was back from the 80s or 90s, I think early 90s, and it was a construction of a deck. Um, and we don't, the plans are so old it's hard to really kind of tell and no as-built was required. Um, but it does, it looks like it should, and it has not changed in a very long time. So the rest of the property is in good condition. We would recommend a certificate of compliance, and it looks like there might be somebody online. Hi, I, I hope you can hear or see me. I can see you, there's a bit of an echo. Let me, let me see if I can share that quickly. If not, we can hear you okay. Um, I am. Is this any better? No, but go ahead. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm counsel for the homeowners. I'm Maggie. I'm with the law firm of Nutter, McLennan, and Fish. They're selling the property. Um, unfortunately, um, that's Wheeler Bancroft who was the original homeowner before he transferred it to trust for the benefit of his family is no longer with us. Um, the trustee is selling actually to a neighbor um, who will probably, I imagine, be back in front of you guys for something else. So we don't have a lot of to present you with, and I apologize. I'd like to have nice, complete records. Um, we think that everything was done in accordance with the order of conditions. At the least, it's been pretty sturdy for uh, the life of the deck. And I apologize for not having more for you. It's okay, we don't either. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I'd recommend a certificate of compliance for it, just to clear it. And the new owner would have to come for us for pretty much anything on that property. So, okay. Any yeah. Questions or comments? No. Oh, so 
Okay, so I hearing no questions or comments, I will make a motion that we authorize the issuing of a certificate of compliance for 29 Snow Wind Road, map 8, parcel P4, SE32-777. Second. Further discussion? Thank you. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Four and zero. Thank you. <clears throat> We're all set. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Next is minutes for March 6. I have no comments. I have no comments, too. No comments. Absent, no comments. Okay. Well, I move we approve the minutes from March 6, 2024. And I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I have one request. Hmm? I have one request on minutes. Brad, you had mentioned at the last, or maybe it was the second meeting in February, that you would wanted to review the first meeting in February a little bit more, review the yep. tape. Yep. Um, so if you have a chance to do that, because you fe felt like you're, it wasn't adequately represented, so if you right. could do that and let us know any changes yep. you have to the first February meeting, we can get those sets done relatively quickly too. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. I have one quick thing before we go to the um, land management plan. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned I would um, let you guys know about this. So. The local comprehensive plan is in the process of being done for the town and it's primarily through the planning department but it has input from the local planning committee um, and several other departments and they're having their kind of first public roundtable presentation of the draft plan this coming Saturday I believe it's at the 204 I can send you more details about the exact time and place um, they would love if peop anybody from the Conservation Commission could participate. I unfortunately won't be here that day, um, but I will send it around and your, your input is very much welcome and wanted. So I'll send you the, the, the details, but I just wanted to mention it. This before is this I, coming this Saturday. This is this coming Saturday. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. I think there'll be more, but this is the first. This, there might be more than the one, but this is the, this is one. Do you know what time it is on Saturday? I will. I will. I will email tomorrow. Okay. I'm going to put an email, commissioners. Okay. The bell's neck. Um, I got you a. Hopefully what's close to a final draft of the Bells Neck Land Management Plan without all the track changes because there were so many I find myself it's hard to read with all of those at that point. Um, so <clears throat> I'm still working on the appendices and because a lot of, a lot of things have to get updated for the appendices, the title information, the maps, um, I'm about halfway done with those. Mark did send a email today of suggestions what to add and I tried to incorporate those, um, the majority of them into the last section of the document. Um, my thought going forward, whether we start talking about it tonight or not, is to really come up with prioritizing goals going forward. Um, sorry it got to you so late but I promised you I'd get you something for this meeting. Um, happy to discuss tonight or at any future meeting. Well, I didn't have a chance to review the thing you sent today. It's fine. Um, what, what, what is the next meeting looking like at this Lighter. Point? We should set aside some time so that we can have, we can all review. Yeah. 
And the I current feel like draft I without the confusing uh, right. strikeouts and yep. additions and whatever. And That's why I gave it to you so you could take it home and write or type. I can send it to you electronically too. And a really nice photograph. Did. You, you guys yeah. today, right? Did I? Yeah. I think, okay. You did. You sent Every, There was so much going on, I don't remember what I did today. Well, it's a big, big lift to get this to this point. I'll well, it's way overdue, and I apologize for that. Well, um, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't apologize. you got a lot going on. I think it's great. One question I do have is, do we need a, a public hearing um, for this, like a line item public hearing? I believe so. I thought right now we're still, until... I feel like until we are good with the document and ready to present it to the public, that we should still have it here. Okay. So when, <clears throat> if we discuss it again, and if you at that point feel the next meeting or the one after that you're ready to present it to the public as this is our revised plan, then we'll have an advertise, then we'll put it as a public hearing. Okay. I agree with that. Yeah, that, that makes sense to me. I'd rather not deliberate too much, you know, at a public hearing. I want mm -hmm. us to have a uni unified front. Yeah. So. Well, one thing I think we should talk about, and it, it's up to you, Mr. Chair, if we talk about it tonight or later, um, in terms of goals, the, um, where is it? Goals are at the very end, section yeah. six. I, I think the, the whole alteration of the parking lot at the Herring River West Reservoir Fish Ladder and the whole ADH concept, I don't know if we've really vetted it that well. I don't think so. Yeah, I, I think it's there. Um, so I think we should, as a group, really think about that. I think there's, there's a lot of good pieces to this. Mm -hmm. um, we, we did vote to close it at night with a gate. Do we, we haven't gone further with that. Do we revisit the gate? Do we um, solidify that vote? Um, I think those are things that, to me, that number five is a little bit conceptual right now. So it is. I, I will admit that was kind of a, a like a quick ad just to get something in there for discussion purposes. Right. So right. I'll make note of the gate. And another concept: if NRCS teams up with the town to redo that whole thing, then all of a sudden it's a it's a concept that there's no limits to what can happen. Right. So do we bring in that potential now? <clears throat> um, without that rehab, I I don't. You know, I'm someone that doesn't really favor a lot of structural changes to the present location yeah. without a re reconstruction. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I think it's a pretty important thing. And are we required to do ADA? ADA? Yeah, so you, you want to it's improve It's not new. Something new, yes. Right. It's not new. So I, I think you want to improve that access. Yeah. Um, do you want a lot of structures in the zero to 50 to do that? So, you know, can you have, you know, soft structures? Can you have, you know... A, a level pathway that people can access. Right. So I think it's definitely something that, otherwise I'm really close to being, uh, I'm good with this document, one more edit. But I think that's an example of a goal that I don't think we fully vetted as a group. That's good. So I don't know if you want to talk about it tonight or just wait till we have everyone present. Well, people have comments to make now. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to make notes because I can improve it in the next couple weeks. A question that I would, I'm would i asking of you is now that we have these priorities is to prioritize the priorities um, in term, and we can do something that's, could do it regardless of cost or what we could do is two columns, low hanging fruit that's gonna be basically town labor to accomplish and things that we might need engineering, design, you know, per other other types of things that are going to that we're going to need funding for. Um, so in my mind, there's there's two categories. Um, so you have two two priority categories. You have the, the low hanging fruit, the easy to accomplish with minimal input, and then the longer term things that are going to require more substantial dollars. So I like instead of it just being items one through ten or whatever it is here. It would be helpful for me to prioritize that list, you know, one being the highest priority going going forward, so we can accomplish things. So that's just doesn't I don't need that tonight, but as you're reviewing and as we discuss. Um, I don't have anything to say about. 
Hopefully next time around we'll have something closer to a compliment. A full compliment here. Are you all coming next time? What's the date? The third. Special. The third. I should be around. Okay. I'd, yeah, I'd I'd love to see the commissioners review this and, and have have a final discussion on it if possible. I I, I feel like um, you know it's been a long time. I can fine tune it a little bit more because the end was a little rushed. But I think the goals is one thing where you know that that to me is somewhat of a new goal hasn't been fully vetted, right? Um, do, and I think we want to make improvements there. But do we wait for the large cooperative project with the feds, or do we do something up front? Right. And, and that's the, that's a discussion point right there. I mean, we put in for the funding for the di for the study, but we don't we won't know that until the summertime. Right. Um, and that's just a study. The town will eventually. Well, if we go through purely through NRCS funding, they'll fund 75% of construction. Right. So the town can either come up with match or we can look at other grants as long as they're not federal. There are a number of other grant opportunities out there that for, especially when you're dealing with fish passage. So. It'll be a big ticket to replace that berm. I mean, it, it's at least, if you're to start now, you know, it's at least five years. But I think it's probably the right thing to do if you think about things in a hundred year window. I agree. Yeah, the, the, the fish quake works great actually right now, but it's still, it will need, that berm is low, sea yeah. level's coming up, um, more storms. I think at some point you've got to do it and it, it, it'll have to be done correctly, I think. So and we get some overflow too, like when high water years of the reservoir, yeah. we actually get overflow from the reservoir over that yeah flat area, you know, going pouring over the wall because um, it just can't handle the volume of water anymore. So. It's a slim margin. We're, right now it's about a six inch freeboard yeah. to have the fish boy operate correctly. Right. And that's that's not a lot of no. freeboard. So. No. so what would need to change? You need to raise the whole berm or dam or whatever. Yeah, there's a, there's a, um, you know, basically a steel revetment, or not a revetment, a wall on either side it's tapped in on the tidal side and on the reservoir side. Uh -huh. I mean, I, I think it would be a full replacement of a, a berm. So you, you know, it's an earthen berm with steel walls on either side. Um, it'd be an opportunity to really just rethink that whole area. And then I think, yeah, you bring in all kinds of ADA concepts. And, right. You know, you do a bridge. I'm not sure I favor the uh, interim thing of putting down pavers and that sort of thing mm. to a very natural area right now. So, but you know, everyone needs to think about that. You can always have language that looks to the future and says, "Here's where we'd like to go," and we're looking for granting opportunities. And yeah, that's that's just the one one I that I thought we had to mm -hmm. get a little more consensus on. And uh, yeah, otherwise, I, I I'm excited to move ahead. In terms of those the graphics. Um, Jim prepared a, a sketch, and I prepared a GIS graphic. Are you thinking of using one of those or both of those? Did you have? A, did you not get my GIS graphic? What was it of? It was of the layout of the box. I don't know if I did. I will look tomorrow. Because I can send that again. I'll let you know. I'll look, I'll check GIS or some bogs. I think you need a graphic because we talk about the three bogs. Oh, the, the one where it was like A, B, C, D? Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, I created that too. Uh, uh, yeah, we created it. Um, a GIS one? Not a GIS one. Because I sent you a GIS one. G Jim created a sketch way back. Yeah. And it, it's a rough sketch, but it kind of it shows the public here the, the areas. All right. I think you need something like that. I uh, Yeah, I was thinking we missed that. I did one in GIS with an ortho view. Okay. So a satellite. We don't view. have GIS here. So well, I, I just did you know, Mass Mappa. Okay, well look look what I, if you don't see it, let me know, I'll resend it. I will, and and I'll look I, tomorrow. I basically sent you a draft. I, th that could be a good thing to put in there because it shows you the different locations. Yeah, definitely. Well, we have um, a number of new appendices, so. Yeah. I did a climate change one, FEMA flood one, all that. So. Oh yeah, one more, the, the uh, citations for the climate change piece are below the climate change and 
Do you want to, want to have all citations in one place? In the yeah, back? at the end. Okay. I just copied for I just yeah. copied and pasted. Yeah. Put put all citations at end. Yep. Well, some of them are in the body. Like if I if I did a website, I would just put it right in the body. But it's also that way. If we put it online, it's interactive. Yeah. People can just click yep. and go. Like a footnote. That that but, works. Okay. Clock an hour back. It yes. is. Ah. Yeah. So it's nine oh six. Time to eat. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. I move we um, adjourn. And all second. All those in favor. All right. Five, four, zero. <laughs>